May I welcome everyone watching the Human Rights Forum online. Today, we are going to deal with a topic that has been dealt in Lithuania for quite a few years. But it seems that we have not said everything. We still continue to be talking, but the convention remains not ratified, which means that there are still many questions that have to be answered. We are talking. It, it, it seems that we have not talked about our main uh, law uh, in comparison to the Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, which is pop popularly called the Istanbul Convention. And despite the popularity of the debates on the Istanbul Convention, we still have many questions when it comes to the content of the Convention itself, and I should say very many interpretations when it comes to the content of the Convention. I think that many things from the Convention are not understood in the right way or have not been clarified. Therefore, today we still have a question whether the, is, uh, the ratification of the Istanbul Convention is mission impossible. I'll briefly introduce uh, the uh, technical details for those who are watching us online. Uh, you can participate in the debate by uh, putting forward the questions. I will uh, read the questions out loud to the participants of the forum. Uh, you can put forward those questions to, uh, to the uh, live streaming of the uh, forum. And those who are present here in the hall, simply raise your hand. Our colleague will come up and bring you the microphone. So my suggestion is that you raise a question as soon as you have it without waiting for the end of the debate. Uh, the debate is uh, presented as part of the project. After the um, debate, I invite everyone to stay here because we are going to open the exhibition You Make the Change on the third floor and uh, you will be able to hear uh, about the exhibition itself, to have a cup of coffee and to talk about the Istanbul Convention person to person. Before I introduce the participants of the debate, I would also like to congratulate everyone on the International Human Rights Day. As I was preparing for the debate, I thought that I want to ask one question to our policy makers, to our executive power, and maybe to provide a suggestion for them. I would propose that they look at the people and organizations that work in uh, the area of human rights and to see whether they are still in their mind, because as I was listening to the communication uh, from the politicians, I thought uh, that um, they speak about human rights defenders as agents, as foreign agents who do not work for the benefit of the country, but uh, on the contrary, they try to damage uh, the state. But it seems that our politicians uh, think that they are more aware of how to address one or another question related to human rights than the organizations themselves. I am grateful to the NGOs um, protecting human rights because you have taken a very difficult path, but uh, what you are doing is a very important thing thing because the human rights are the foundations of our democracy. When there is no human rights and there is no democracy, uh, we are no longer a free state. So I wish that you will remain courageous and continue to defend human rights. Let me introduce the participants of the debate. Uh, we will have two panelists, uh, Erika Leonaite, a lawyer and uh, ombudsperson of the um, 
uh, Seimas, uh, who has just started her uh, tenure. I'm the head of the uh, Equal Opportunities for Men and Women, Yolanta Sakalowski. Some panelists will join us uh, online, uh, let's say in some 15 minutes. Uh, we will have the uh, Vice Minister of Social Affairs and Labor. Uh, I already see that we have the Lele Nardinia from Vitotas Magnus University. Uh, she's a professor at that university. Good morning. Can you hear us? Good morning. I, can, I do hear you. Laima Vaigele is the member of the Human Rights Center. And Professor Dainus Žalimas, a dean of the Faculty of Law of the Vidotas Magnus University, former president of the Constitutional Court. Can you... I'll begin with one observation uh, that I found very interesting when uh, uh, Victoria Chmilita Nielsen, speaker of the Seimas, was asked about the Istanbul Convention. The question was as follows. Is it possible that the convention will be deliberated during this spring session? The speaker of the Seimas said that we need not only political will for the deliberation and ratification of this convention, but also uh, courage. And I am looking at you, Erika. Uh, how do you understand this statement? Why should we be speaking about courage in this context? Well, in fact, we speak about courage because refraining from ratification and avoiding to ratify the convention is related to fears that uh, have been uh, intentionally or non-intentionally instigated previously, uh, fears that uh, have been related to various myths. When we speak about political will and courage, I think that those two aspects are closely intertwined because uh, there is no political will because there is a fear to adopt an unfavorable decision. There is uh, there is a fear because of the concepts uh, that uh, are used in the convention. Uh, there are fears uh, to undertake responsibility. I have a uh, 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 the same question to Professor Jalimas. Now you are in Moldova now. Uh, some processes related to the convention have also taken place in that country. Could you comment on the uh, aspect of courage as well as other aspects? Well, I am not in Moldova. I am in Venice uh, and the Venice Commission uh, today for the second time running will debate uh, the constitutional implications of the Istanbul Convention. Uh, Previously, a few years ago, uh, the, the Venice Commission um, dealt uh, with the question posed by uh, the other country, by Armenia, but now there are the parliamentarians of other countries who also address the, the, the issue of ratification of the convention in Moldova. So the Constitutional Court of Moldova did not want to adopt the decision unilaterally. Therefore, it contacted the Venus Commission. In this context, I'd like to say that, well, courage uh, what can be seen in Moldova, Armenia, and Lithuania is that there are very many myths uh, related to the Istanbul Convention. And these myths I should, should be called as an organized disinformation campaign. I wouldn't want to say that this is organized from uh, foreign countries, but there are certain uh, signs uh, uh, showing to that. Both in Armenia, Moldova, and Lithuania, we hear the same myths, uh, even by the lawyers themselves, that allegedly the Istanbul Convention will change something in the constitutional framework of the country. 
So the Venus Commission has already uh, undertaken, uh, uh, has already taken the decision and dispelled the fears by Armenia. I believe the same uh, will be done uh, when it comes to Moldova. And it should be noted that there is a conflict of civilizations because the opponents of the Istanbul Convention often raise, how should I put that? Well, they often raise the arguments that are not like uh, that are not in line with the constitutional foundations. First and foremost, the uh, principle of non-discrimination, the principle of equal opportunities, and other principles. So, uh, the same arguments were raised by Moldova, and I believe that we see the um, uh, conflict of civilization. I, it would not come as a surprise that it was the socialist political group that contacted the Venus Pan, uh, Commission. Um, this uh, political party is a pro-Russian one. So such uh, arguments are rather established in Moldova, even orthodox and uh, uh, churches uh, uh, disseminate the same information. Well, we might see some uh, similar steps taken by Lithuanian church because it is said that the Istanbul Convention will eliminate the differences between men and women, which is a sheer lie because uh, no one is intending to eliminate uh, the differences between women and men. The convention is aimed at eliminating the attitudes, the negative attitudes towards women, which say that um, a woman is inferior to men. That's why certain acts against women might be justified. Moreover, there are myths saying that the Istanbul Convention will change the concept of family and that it will put uh, that uh, will pave the way uh, to the laws for the same sex uh, marriages. Uh, while the convention itself only talks about the prevention of forced marriages, it is also paradoxical that the convention enhances family and tries to protect uh, the women against violence and combat the very early, the very reasons of domestic violence and violence against uh, women. Opponents of the convention say that the convention will hinder parents and will prevent parents from educating their children. If we looked at the constitution of the Republic of Lithuania, we could see that uh, the constitution contains an article saying that parents have to raise their children as uh, decent uh, people, that the people have to obey the law and various legal norms. So, in fact, the uh, convention, the Istanbul Convention, allows very wide discretion when it comes to education curricula. So the convention defends constitutional values rather than tries to eliminate them. I would also like to stress that all those stereotypes directed against the Istanbul Convention are prevailing in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, they are very typical. Therefore, this raises a question whether this has been done by the attempts of the locals or this is the result of the attempted attack from foreign countries. Well, you already started talking about the content of the Istanbul Convention and there are, I do agree that there are some sensitive parts when it comes to the Convention. 
So we will come to the details further on, but I liked one thing that you have mentioned. You said that this is not a one-off attempt to disseminate disinformation, but it's an organized uh, campaign that is taking place both in Lithuania and in Moldova. The example, the case of Moldova has uh, demonstrated that uh, we face with uh, the very with that same situation here in Lithuania. Uh, when I asked uh, to comment uh, uh, on the Istanbul Convention, Madam Vaige, she said that all this resistance campaign is a part of the global campaign that promotes Lithuania's uh, distrust in uh, the, the rights of women. Could you expand on the idea that you have expressed? Thank you. I do believe that this is a global process, but as Professor rightly mentioned, it is gaining momentum, particular momentum in Eastern Europe, but similar processes are noticeable in the United States as well, where they discuss the right of abortion. Women's rights are attacked in many countries uh, across the world. I s would say that this is not a s conflict of civilizations, but rather a that, but rather processes that are taking place in uh, many uh, countries. Uh, for example, when it comes to the national identity, national identity should be explained uh, by the Constitution. We uh, associate national identity with gender equality. However, populists uh, say that the Lithuanian national identity is related to traditional uh, gender roles, while the traditional perceptions are rather opposite. So these are the parallel processes that are taking place across the world, and I'm concerned about the processes because, as Margarita Jankowskaita has previously mentioned, we have very many debate when it comes to women's rights. Therefore, women are very symbolic in the Istanbul Convention. On the one hand, the Istanbul Convention does not introduce any new 20, uh, let's say, uh, sexes or the rights for transgender people. This is not included in the Istanbul Convention. But on the other hand, it does not establish traditional uh, roles. Therefore, there is a uh, uh, there is an argument between opponents of the Istanbul Convention and proponents of the Istanbul Convention when it comes to um, uh, gender roles. I don't know. Uh, well. Our today's question is whether it is possible to ratify the Istanbul Convention. But I believe that we still have another important document, that is the United Nations Convention Against Elimination of All uh, types of discriminations against women that was adopted in 1979. There are many more conventions that are of crucial importance. The Istanbul Conventions is a very advanced one and it is uh, the Istanbul Convention expands further on the topic of violence on the level of convention. However, commitment to equality, gender equality, uh, has been in place since 1979. So, 
I think that uh, if the currency must have to ratify the United Nations Convention, it would not uh, uh, dare to ratify it. The same was said by other uh, uh, professionals who said that there was uh, no uh, problem to ratify the United Nations Convention, but there are problems when it comes to ratifying the Istanbul Conventions. What does it say about that? Good morning once again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The question is of particular importance. It is a very interesting question, and I was uh, very happy to hear the rhetoric uh, uh, question uh, made by the speaker of the SEMAS uh, about the courage, whether we lack courage. To my opinion, we lacked courage uh, since uh, 2011 when the government, uh, or we still lack the courage uh, even since 2013, the same as lacks both the courage and political will to ratify the Istanbul Convention. So we should not be speaking only about the attitudes and provisions of the uh, Conservative Party, we because they did not include any provisions related to women. Uh, the Social Democrat Party that has traditionally been talking about gender equality and protecting women's rights, but in uh, their uh, programs in 2014, uh, when we, they were the majority in the Lithuanian parliament did nothing to ensure that the document is ratified. So we can see clearly that there is no political uh, will in the Lithuanian parliament to ratify the um, Istanbul Convention. The ratification of the convention has been included in the work programs of the Lithuanian parliament on many occasions, irrespective of who was the ruling party. Uh, this uh, uh, parliamentary term has also included the ratification into the agenda. However, uh, the question was deleted soon because um, uh, the speaker of the SEMA said that uh, we still have to do the homework when it comes to the ratification uh, of the convention. It seems that we have not done the homework despite the fact that we have been dealing with this question for so many years. Uh, so it seems that the only one that does not do its homework is the Lithuanian parliament. We had a very open debate uh, that was uh, broadcast. Uh, well, I believe that we need a very open debate that uh, uh, to be broadcast uh, live in order to hear what each member of the Seimas of Parliament thinks of the Istanbul Convention. So as long we don't have the political will and the courage to ratify the Istanbul Convention, uh, as long as there is no political will, uh, we won't ratify uh, the Istanbul Convention if the same as does not show the courage. I agree with uh, Laima, and I also agree with Professor Jalimas that uh, this is an organized disinformation campaign against Eastern European countries because the United Nations Convention that was adopted in 1979 on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women did not speak about violence against women. It contains no article related to the uh, uh, violence against women. Article 5 talks about negative attitudes towards women. However, in 1982 and in 2018, uh, general recommendations were adopted. And 
the recent recommendations were prepared by those who drafted the Istanbul Convention. The CEDAW Convention is even shows even more courage because it talks about same-sex marriages. It talks about the things that have not been included in the Istanbul Convention. So uh, why? Uh, did no one notice that the CEDAW Convention was ratified? It was ratified because uh, there was a political will and all society was ready to go west and to undertake Western values. Whereas now uh, the situation with regard to the Istanbul Convention uh, it seems that we have turned our backs to the Western Europe uh, and turned our uh, turned towards the East. Such attitudes are prevailing not only uh, among policymakers and the executive branch, but also within our society. Foreign Affairs Ministry is conducting the policy that is uh, uh, targeted towards the East. Our policies are related to the businesses is, that is conducted, uh, that is carried out in the East. Our cultural life are held in high esteem in the best theaters in Moscow. So it seems that ideologically we have already entered the uh, field of the East. So the Istanbul Convention has become a, a weapon. It is not a coincidence that only Russia and Azerbaijan has not signed this convention. Well, uh, uh, Professor Jalumas mentioned that uh, Bulgarians will follow the same path taken by, Mo by Moldova and their uh, constitutional court will uh, contact the Venus Commission. So I believe that there is an absolute lack of political will in the Lithuanian parliament is a problem. And I also see that our society, including uh, political level and businesses, are turning their backs on the Western values and they are turning uh, their backs on the uh, things uh, and on the values that we try to fight for the, on the ele before the 11th of March 1990. These days we are having discussion or where we are heading in terms of our value policy. And this all reflects the part of this discussion and the choices that cause concern and uh, forces us certain questions, uh, what ne what's next? Before continuing the discussion, I would like to ask you to attend the contest by the organizers, those who follow us online, the first three uh, who answer the question. Uh, the question correctly will get the gifts on when the uh, Istanbul Convention was adopted. But, uh, professor professor mentioned certain topics that uh, need to be looked into. The pressure from the public or the convictions of the public that influence the decisions of politicians concerning uh, uh, ratification or non-ratification. Uh, the Ministry of uh, 
responsible for addressing this issue and in 2016 you had a certain evaluation or the request from the United Nations on the ratification. In 2022, a new discussion will be uh, will be raised in the United Nations. What will be our answer if we don't uh, if we don't uh, ratify this convention? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations on this important occasion. And when answering the question, I should speak about our achievements. The Ministry of Social Security and Labor is responsible for legislation on this matter. And the explanation of this issue. This year has been very busy. Speaking about the Istanbul Convention, me and my colleagues working uh, at this matter see that uh, myths and fears uh, can be destroyed by education. Another important aspect I want to mention is in order to prepare and to answer what we, where we are, we need to know where are those fears in the Istanbul Convention. I'm very glad I will courageously say that the ministry knows and in policy shaping we are basing ourselves not only on our office opinions, we also talk with the NGOs, with scientists, and one of the initiatives is that we have to speak in facts, not in stereotypes and fears. So in working with the Istanbul Convention and its original translation. We discuss with scientists uh, working in this area, NGOs working in this area, and in their, op their opinion was very important to us. And actually, fears do not exist, threats do not exist. All those things that we hear today in society and uh, uh, from certain politicians, these are false convictions. And before speaking and expressing your opinion, please do read the text of the convention. Does it include any fairs? So those people who read the convention and want to read will not find any fairs or threats. What are the measures that can be used to fight those fairs? Because this is new. It has, uh, this discussion has been continuing for many years, and the same arguments appear, they do not change. When we speak about the substance or the text, uh, the most sensitive uh, text, uh, the concept of change, uh, gender explanation of this concept in the Lithuanian language and uh, different sexes. So what is ministry doing to fight those fears? These are emotional aspects, and you have to find the way to fight human emotions. Do you have such measures? Yes, we're doing that. One of uh, those important things is uh, that we are reviewing the translation of the text of the convention and we will soon have uh, linguistic uh, conclusions, uh, conclusions from experts. It is uh, very important to explain to people that uh, people who uh, are misinterpreting the convention are giving rise to those fears. 
We need to have different opinions, but we want those fears and stereotypes to disappear in our society. And we launched a huge, have launched a huge campaign, I Cannot Remain Silent, and this uh, campaign addresses our fears and stereotypes. But yes, uh, this is uh, the, the issue of violence. It is easy to speak about violence, but we have a very specific topic, the Istanbul Convention. I'm very interested in this topic. I've researched this uh, issue. But from your ministry, I haven't heard anything, including your ideas. Politicians mostly speak on this topic. And then we have the situation, as Professor Jalma said, we see a certain organized campaign which is directed against the Istanbul Convention in person of some personal goals. So what are you doing in this direction? It is not enough to educate people, but how will you do that? This is a, a continuous process. So it should have started yesterday. Well, you are stressing at a very good point. It is not too late to speak and educate. Yes, probably we can say that uh, our previous work has been insufficient, but we are seeking to educate. We see the statistics, we see the public opinion. Another aspect I want to mention is that we need to speak with the the voice with our voice very often the society has different conviction and is not able to hear our voice so we have to have a dialogue with the NGOs that have a correct dialect also in a dialogue with the scientists it is not an easy task because we have uh, much opposition from the media and different convictions of the society. We need to be more targeted in this area to see some change. NGOs are working on this issue and scientists uh, do not need to be convinced. Actually, politicians and uh, the public needs to be reconvinced. Politicians are giving false messages to the electorate. I haven't heard answers to that question. Maybe I will. But when we speak about uh, the pressure from the public in a more general terms, Professor Jalimas, in your opinion, is it mission impossible in terms of public convictions that are getting, that are worsening in terms of human rights, and not only uh, in terms of the Istanbul Convention, about people's um, attitudes to socially vulnerable groups and also on some issues uh, that are ambiguous. Maybe this is a vicious circle and it is impossible to implement this uh, content and substance of the convention. Well, I think that it is possible. Lithuania would be a number 35 if it ratified the convention. Only six EU member states have not ratified the convention. They are not the example Bulgar Bulgaria. Hungary, the Slovak Republic, Latvia have not ratified it. I think that the Lithuanian society 
should not be seen as lagging behind from the societies in those 35 countries. What we lack here is political leadership in any way. The parliament is responsible for the ratification of this convention, not the society. If the politicians finally become courageous and use this courage, we would not have any problems here. Because difficult decisions need to be adopted eventually. We should not uh, wait for a certain consensus in, in the society on this issue. And if certain, as we see in the history, if difficult decisions are adopted, then the society adapts to them. And we see the decrease of violence in this case. And the sooner we ratify, the sooner we have the positive effects. But in Lithuania, we don't have political leadership in the present of the Republic. Well, the, our previous uh, president uh, urged uh, the ratification of this uh, uh, the ratification of this convention. So this is uh, our problem. The Minister of Social Security and Labour and other ministers and uh, responsible top officials should uh, show leadership and in this way a majority would be formed in the parliament. This is an issue of a political elite and not of the society. Different uh, unions, uh, different uh, social organizations that speak against the conventions is not the majority. We need to eventually act on that. I do not know what... I haven't heard any normal arguments against the convention, and all those doubts about the constitutionality are ill-grounded, ungrounded, and uh, illegal nonsense. So we need political leadership and political will. Professor, about the substance. The most uh, sensible uh, places in the convention. How should they be interpreted uh, to prevent those doubts? Because uh, different discussions uh, um, emerged on different concepts uh, of the convention. Since we see the need of interpretation and explanation to the public to decrease doubts, so should we start the explanation? I think that explanation is worthwhile only in that case when people want to hear that. But a part of the society that is uh, affected by the Catholic Church, they do not want to hear our arguments. They simply are against the ratification, and it is uh, impossible to explain something to them because those who read the convention and see the international experts' conclusions uh, are absolutely convinced that uh, there are no misused concepts in the convention and that the convention promotes uh, uh, the destruction of uh, stereotypes. The evolution of humanity saw the understanding that a man is better and is superior to a woman, but a civilized society should not uh, base itself on such convictions, and I see no need uh, to discuss that. Actually, the convention does not contain the text, does not contain any uh, arguments on different sexes, uh, transsexual aspects. 
vieninti lėvietoj, tai yra draudžiamos prie vartinės santokas ir Speaking about uh, marriages, uh, the text does not speak about any same-sex marriages. It only uh, fights uh, forced marriages. I do not know what else can be explained here. And violence and humiliation of women is weakening families is absurd. And the opponents actually are saying that these are not arguments. These are stubborn convictions. And it is time to overcome them and to ratify the convention. Therefore, politicians, could, politicians should remember that they, they have been elected for a purpose and engage in some populistic arguments. Those who want to hear our voice, those who want to read the text, they can find different means to help them. Members of parliament understand correctly that they have to ratify the convention. So it's now or never. Well, yes, I think, yes, it is uh, very discouraging to keep this uh, matter in this uh, strong tension, I think, uh, the agenda should finally be implemented and we should not be deceiving the public. Neringa, you wanted to say something. Thank you. I will briefly react to what has been said that uh, the main problem is uh, the translation, that we need to review the translation. Yes, there is a paradox uh, that uh, that uh, we deal with this in the context of uh, in the Istanbul Convention. We have uh, the concepts of uh, sex and gender. And we have, and in the Lithuanian language, we use the word social uh, elitis for gender translation. In, but uh, in new documents, uh, gender is very often used, uh, and in the Lithuanian language, it is uh, into the Lithuanian language, it is translated simply as uh, sex. Should we change uh, this uh, uh, tradition? Our legal system actually contains that, but uh, when I speak to the experts of the Council of Europe, that in one or another regulation, should we include sex or gender? And I say that these are parallel or synonyms. In the Lithuanian language, we do not have uh, two words for sex and gender, and we should not uh, stop at here and take the opportunity. Speaking about education, I would like to briefly stress that when we speak about uh, gender, as it is uh, translated uh, in the Istanbul translation, in the Istanbul Convention. We are not speaking about the biological sex. This is a reality that aside to biological sex, we have a person or a personality with uh, some gender models, uh, social roles that change. And when we speak about violence against women based on gender or sex, the United Nations has two investigations. One is 
against Boko Haram in Nigeria and one against uh, Afghanistan. And uh, these investigations uh, speak about persecution of women and girls uh, due to their gender, for example, attacks uh, against girls uh, in schools in order to change their behavior or persecution of women who worked in public institutions and we see these consequences in Afghanistan and this is related to women's persecution due to their gender because uh, their behavior is not in line with what radical groups uh, expect from women. So we need to clearly say and to admit and clearly say and politicians and institutions, responsible institutions should uh, do that, that we have many areas of disinformation and some false information, misinformation, which is correctly, incorrectly interpreted, misinterpreted, and this is done on purpose. We need to have to say that all steps have been taken to have the ratification, we have uh, the legal base and we have all the explanations. I support Margarita Jankowskaita. The ball is actually in the hands of the parliament. The ball is not in the ministry. We have done our homework and therefore I urge uh, the legislators to take the necessary decisions. Donatas asks, I was interested in the United uh, Kingdom's uh, practice in ratifying this convention. And the, can the United Kingdom be an example um, uh, for Lithuania as it uh, conducts the uh, conformity review every year? I think that we are ready. And we are ready. And we have to take action. We had much discussion. They were wide and extensive, but now we needed some decisions. Erika, maybe you could uh, expand on that. Well, this convention should not be directly implemented. It means that uh, based on this convention, a person could not enjoy the rights uh, without uh, certain uh, legal acts adopted. If uh, uh, the Istanbul Convention was ratified in Lithuania, the prohibition order would not be directly applicable to Lithuania. And therefore, we need to take the commitment to take actions. And we should not have the conformity, the ideal conformity. So one of the fears, the expert committee that uh, uh, looks over the ratification of the committee, uh, of the implementation, uh, ratification of the convention says that certain recommendations can be issued to one or another country. For example, in Sweden, uh, recommendations by this review committee was uh, given, but it is not a binding recommendation that should be feared, and Lithuania should not be feared of such recommendations by the review committee. For example, Serbia that has ratified uh, the Istanbul Convention has received recommendations. 
that the situation needs to be changed and that practices should be stopped when children are victims of uh, violence are taken into care and that uh, the treatment of children who become victims or become witnesses of violence and that uh, women who are victims to violence uh, should not uh, be um, aborted by force. It depends, of course, uh, all, all those recommendations are by the Gravio Committee depend on the uh, achievements of uh, individual countries. Vytauta Shilinskas, uh, Vice Minister of Social Security and Labor. So my question is uh, the same as Donatas asked. Do we know what needs to be made to comply with the Istanbul Convention? The ministry is directly responsible for the ratification of this conference. We've discussed it from the very beginning about the political will and courage. What should be done to finally ratify this convention? to stop these uh, endless discussions as uh, the parliamentary terms uh, change. Maybe you have some proposals that we haven't heard yet. Speaking about the implementation of the convention, this is a continuous pro process. And if Lithuania ratified the convention, the Gravio Committee and its recommendations would be very if useful for Lithuania. It would help us to see which areas need to be improved. The Convention is a golden standard for developed countries in fighting violence against women. It is a very high standard that uh, nobody can meet it ideally, but this is the target, this is the goal that we are trying to achieve. Therefore, I recommend reading the text of the Convention. For example, violence against girls or forced marriages is something which is discussed in the Convention. From our side, we need to seek the prevention of violence, domestic violence. This is a serious problem in Lithuania because every 10 minutes police get reports from people and the majority of them would be women. We have given the proposal that uh, the laws uh, on uh, domestic violence uh, should be amended by introducing the arrest order. It would be fast and effective help for women and police supports uh, this uh, legislative draft. Another thing is that we see that essential change in gender equality is that when people change and their attitudes change and the law or convention is just one of the ways to change uh, people's convictions. We are preparing different uh, education programs. Uh, we've tried to change the attitude inside the ministry and uh, inside different other ministries that this is uh, the problem not only of Lithuania but the problem of our institutions. And this aspect was included in the development programs of every ministry. We also want to work with municipalities, we want to consult them, to work with them. So these are the directions that we are heading to. The convention itself would be a very good indicator that Lithuania joins those countries which see gender equality as an important uh, achievement. 
that we have joined the club of developed countries. Despite the decision of the parliament, we should not stop addressing the problems that we face. We all agree that now or never with this convention, in your opinion, in terms of the ministry, what are the obstacles to the ratification? The obstacles my legal practice shows, well, philosophers might criticize me, but people very often argue on concepts. People like arguing about concepts. 90% of people would agree on the text of the, con of the conventions, but uh, the remaining part would have some arguments. This is a natural process. I've learned recently that very uh, recently, a research has been made on whether people are addressed as you in a, in a diminutive or not in a diminutive form. We see the change in Lithuania and gender uh, Gender or sex is a discussion, the concepts that are very often discussed, uh, and we should not stop people from discussing. Maybe linguists, uh, they can uh, influence uh, the correct uh, translation of the concepts. Thank you very much for your participation uh, in this discussion on the Istanbul Convention. I hope that this is that the ratification is a mission possible, and uh, we will have political will and courage to do that. Uh, I want to remind you all that but in uh, floor three, we will open an exhibition, and I invite you to see this exhibition. See you in the next discussions.